Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think because there is some technical problem that we may skip this section. So we will continue to the main agenda is about the guest lecture for today. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to introduce you the moderator for this session. Well, I'm Sudar Fitri, will be the moderator for this session. Uh, I'm one of the lecturer in information technology department, faculty of teacher training and education. And uh, for today's lecturer that we already present, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ahmad Faisal Muhammad Ayub. He is one of the lecturers at University Malaysia Terengganu, UMT. And the topic that will be delivered today is AI-based autonomous small boat via reinforcement learning. But I think uh, Professor Faisal already here. Assalamualaikum, oh, Ibu. Halo, Professor. Ya, Waalaikumsalam. Baik-baik, apa kabar, Pak? How are you? Alhamdulillah, sehat-sehat. Uh, thank you for joining, Prof. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, uh, but before you deliver the material, I'd like to inform you that uh, you have 45 minutes to deliver the material. And then after that, we have 15 minutes to do the discussion session and maybe Q&A from the students or maybe the lecturer also. But uh, before that, allow me to introduce you from the curriculum vitae that we have before. Uh, Pak Taufik Muhammad boleh ini sharingnya sudah dibuka belum ya? Sudah, Miss Miss sudah jadi kohos kok. Belum bisa ya? Oh ya sudah saya cek lagi. Oke, okay. okay, these are the profile from our lecturer for today. The full name is Associate Professor Dr. Ahmad Faisal Muhammad Ayub. Uh, uh, he works in UMT, University Malaysia Terengganu. The expertise field is mechanical engineering. And also for vehicle design, he graduated from University Malaya and University of New South Wales, Australia. And here you can see about the many of profiles such as professional membership, networking research collaboration, also for publication. For publication, you can check online from the orchid.org or made from the Google Scholar by typing his name. And here are the list of publications. And later on, you can check out also from the several links that are already provided on the screen. Okay, well, now uh, I think it is time for you, Prof, to deliver the material. <laughs> so, uh, time is yours. All right. Uh, thank you, Ibu Fitri. Um, I would like to thank um, Universitas uh, Muhammadiyah Tasik Malaya. Um, it is an honor for me to be here. Let me share my screen. Uh, Okey, bagaimana Ibu? Boleh nampak ke? Sudah, ya, Pak. Sudah, Pak. Sudah, sudah okay. bisa. Terima kasih Bapa dan Ibu. Okey, so saya bermula ya. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Director uh, of Universitas Tasik Malaya, uh, UMTAS. Uh, I believe this is a very um, this is a very good partnership that we have between University Malaysia Terengganu and also UMTAS. Uh, UMT and UMTAS. So, um, and we have lots of friends there in uh, UMTAS. Um, my 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 uh, postdoctoral um, is uh, Dr. Mujarto. So, very happy to to have this kind of uh, collaboration between both university. So, the topic today, I, I changed a little bit. Um, the topic is autonomous surface vehicle using neuroevolutionary method. Um, so nowadays, if you look at um, uh, how uh, the European countries and also United States of America, people are starting to give focus on autonomous vehicles. Um, the type of autonomous vehicles that typically you know is autonomous car like Tesla, so they can drive by itself. Um, but we are going to look at later in, in, the, in the lecture today that uh, there is a need for autonomous vehicles for ships and also boats. 
um, and safe, accurate, and predictable autonomous system in marine vehicles are very important. Um, and understanding all those intelligent system inside the boat is critical to ensure this autonomous boat is safe to be operated because we have human on the boat. So if they move by itself, we need to make sure that the boat is safe. Although the use of artificial intelligence in the design of road-based vehicle has arrived at the self-driving level, like autonomous car, um, there exists a significant gap within the research of autonomous ships to operate in restricted waters, for example, in rivers and also in lakes or, or ports. In this talk, we are going to look at the insights on the simulation design of an autonomous boat. It's quite technical talk today. Uh, I'm going to present you a simple illustrative framework as a starting point, so an easy one, to begin working in a simulated environment, which can be used as a foundation before the physical autonomous ships or boats are constructed in the real world situation. All right, so uh, this is the overview of the presentation. The state of the art uh, simulation environment consists of a virtual 3D environment. Uh, this virtual environment can represent river, uh, terrain and a surface vehicle with distance sensors. Uh, the surface vehicle or boats shall be controlled using neuroevolution based uh, autonomous pilot system. You will ask to me, um, what is uh, neuroevolution? Okay, uh, so this is what is neuroevolution? Um, in the simplest definition, neuroevolution means artificial neural network plus evolutionary algorithm. I think you have heard about genetic algorithm. So those are evolution algorithms. If we combine evolution algorithms with ANN, uh, we, now we get neuroevolution. The work of neuroevolution neuro typically called CNE or conventional neuroevolution, which use single population approach so to arrive at the final weights and bias of the artificial neural network. Um, in this work, two scenarios will be, be, will be presented, uh, navigation in restricted waters in the river and obstacle avoidance capability of an autonomous ship. Uh, results show that the resulting autonomous ship is also capable to perform obstacle avoidance uh, in the test track, although they are not being tra trained to do so. So we only train the boat for moving, but eventually they know how to avoid obstacle, which is very amazing. Uh, and this can be used as a starting point to extend uh, for scenario base. For example, if you, are, you have bad weather and you want to see whether your artificial intelligence can handle it or not. Um, before I go further, I would like to introduce you to University of Malaysia Terengganu, my university. Uh, we are located by the side of South China Sea, uh, our campus just beside the sea. Um, therefore, we do a lot of uh, sea uh, going activities, uh, beach going activities like um, sea survival programs, snorkeling, and also scuba diving. And also we have sailing as well. So uh, we welcome you to come to our campus. Uh, please come so we can, uh, we can work together here uh, in the field of maritime, in the field of engineering, something that I really passionate about. Okay, going back to the content. Uh, fundamentally, an autonomous boat or, or, or autonomous surface vehicle is a subclass of a mobile robot. So I used to do mobile robots in 2014, and I think that um, let's try to implement this on boats. So conceptually, a mobile robot consists of a control system, similar system, uh, sensors, for example, distance sensors, light sensors, and also vision sensors, and actuators uh, like motors and also servos to respond to its surrounding. Uh, an autonomous mobile robot can sense its surrounding uh, and act upon the surrounding based on the mission definition. In the field of maritime technology or marine technology, there are vast potential use cases for autonomous surface vehicle robots. The primary mission of the autonomous surface vehicle typically for reconnaissance, for patrol, for intercept, for environmental monitoring. Other tasks is also exist, for example, uh, maneuvering, cruise control and collision avo avoidance. This is something that uh, be the core, being the core of the, the mobile robots, the autonomous mobile robots. For this work, Autonomous control of a surface vehicle is designed where an agent demonstrates river navigation. So this is the environment, river navigation, while avo avoiding obstacles in a dynamic environment using ANN. Uh, the desirable uh, steering and throttle are achieved using ANN in which the weight and bias of the ANN are found using the unsupervised machine learning method. So the unsupervised machine learning method used in this work is reinforcement learning, 
in which the agent is rewarded based on the attainment of accumulated checkpoints. So we are going to see whether if the candidate boats can go further safe, safely. So that's the strongest candidate that we are going to, uh, to make it the final robots, the, the best robots. Um, and this is achieved using genetic algorithms in which for every simulation runs, the best designs shall be retained or kept to evolve in a search for the best design until the arbitrary generation number is achieved. So it's an iterative process. So it goes from here to here. So, and finally, you are going to get the best robots. Let, let we look at the literature review. Um, neuroevolutionary works based in the literature concerning ship steering and piloting remains lacking, very low compared to the autonomous car. This is due to the high volume of production of cars compared to boats. So we don't see people buy boats every year. We see people change their car every five to seven years or nine years, but not boats. That's why the results uh, are very low compared to the uh, ships, uh, sorry, compared to the cars. Um, however, when we try to look at uh, the Elsevier or Science Direct, uh, we, we see that there is a stark differences. For example, this in this particular yes. data, we see 50% difference in terms of volume and uh, of literature. And this is con demonstrate that the research gap is real uh, in this discipline and require attention because we are moving towards the, the fourth industrial revolution, right? Um, so, if you are doing yeah. autonomous boats uh, in Indonesia, you probably uh, among the top five people are who, who is doing this because not many people are publishing in this. So, so this is a very uh, good opportunity for research, especially if you want to make your name in, in the Southeast Asia. If you look at the, some notable literatures, uh, there are some that involve uh, motion studies, there are some that involve visual perceptions, for example, uh, using convolutional neural network, um, deep convolutional neural network. Um, and there are some that relates to the collision avoidance, for example, COREX, artificial potential field, a a a APF, and also CDRRA. So this is the name of the algorithms. So uh, the autonomous um, control system for boats is highly nonlinear compared to the road base because you don't experience much drift in a slow uh, ve velocity. Um, initially, uh, not initially, we can look at the most recent one. Okay, in 2019, we look at the NOSHA race work uh, that demonstrate the use of AI to steer ships to complete maneuvering tasks. Um, and in 2013, if you go back in 2012, uh, they used the combination of fuzzy logic and ANN. Uh, to perform autopilot ship navigation. This is uh, demonstrated using the zigzag motion. If you, if you build boats for naval architecture, you, you know tactical circles and also zigzag motion. Um, and this work is still pretty much very rare in the autonomous boat. So uh, looking at the visual perception of autonomous ship, um, there are work that involve the uh, object detection and tracking. They use the K nearest neighbor, uh, artificial neural network, the the, the, the generic one, and also the convolutional neural network, CNN, and also deep convolutional neural network. So uh, in the field of collision avoidance, ZOO in 2011 proposed the use of potential field methods. So which means that you have um, the uh, artificial field that you put on the sides of your boats, uh, just to make sure that the boats stay in its course and make a decision based on that. Um, and uh, also the neural network also, also used to provide transformation between the generalized force as input and the individual thruster command for the output. So this is something that we are going to demonstrate in this work as well. Others are the use of COREX, which is the international, sorry, Convention of the International Regulation for Preventing Collision at Sea uh, for men and also unmanned vehicles. COREX is very important because um, it will going to make you safe at sea. So uh, other ships are not, not going to hit you or you are not going to hit any ships. So we are going to prevent accidents at sea. Corex is very important. Um, and there are still lacking work in terms of autonomous uh, ships uh, in the literature that focus on the Corex. So um, uh, it is agreed that uh, the collision avoidance should meet the several optimal rules for Corex. Um, for example, uh, looking at the collision avoidance safety and also network availability, and the shortest navigation distance during collision avoidance. But if you look at, um, at the, uh, uh, an autonomous ship that able to think by uh, 
themselves. Uh, we should not rely on networks. So it should rely on itself, the knowledge that they have been trained before. So this is something that we are going to emphasize in this work. Um, the methodology will be presented in this section. Uh, I will discuss about the basic concept of genetic algorithm. Uh, and later I'm going to describe the agents and also the description of the tracks. So this is uh, the description of the algorithm. If you look at the slides here, uh, on the left side here is the concept of genetic algorithm. Okay, on the right side here is the artificial neural network. So it's basically a simple uh, multi-layer perceptron artificial neural network. Uh, and if we run neural evolution, we are basically doing the population-based weight search for an artificial neural network in which the objective function is to maximize the number of checkpoints. So you have a boat and the boat's roaming by itself um, and we want to maximize the number of checkpoints. And every time if the boat hit the, uh, the side walls of the river, we reject the boat, we kill the boat. So which means that it's, it is not fit. So this is how it looks like. So uh, if this is the starting point of the boat and all those green lines here are the checkpoints. So we are going to uh, have the boat to maneuver itself. And then uh, while they are maneuver, we are going to give marks based on the number of checkpoint that the robot has achieve. In this case, the, the robot has uh, nine sensors, okay? So uh, our input is, uh, we have 10 inputs, okay? Uh, input one is for sensor one, sensor two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And finally, we have uh, the eight uh, uh, inputs, which is the velocity of the boats. Because if the boat are moving by itself, they have the potential to drift. So we need to penalize the boat that cannot control its drift. Uh, so this is something that happens in real time because in, in the real world, we need to make sure that boats can control themselves. They don't hit anyone, anyone. And this is the principal particulars of the hydrographic vessel that we, are, we, we use in this work. Um, it's basically a small autonomous boat. Okay, this is the small autonomous boat. Uh, the length is 2.4 meters. Uh, the width of the beam is one meter. It's quite small. Uh, the draft is 0 0.3 meters. So uh, the height between the waterline and the keel. Uh, and the weight is 500 kg. Although it's a very small boat, it has a very a lot of sensors. Um, it has a top speed of seven knots, not too fast. Uh, and it has nine distance sensors. So distance sensor is along the, the line here. So this is the distance sensor where, where it located. Because uh, initially we don't want the boat to hit anything, in, including their friends or uh, the side wall of the river. This is the test track, um, the training track, sorry. This is the training track, the AI training track. Uh, and it has one straight curve here. Okay, so it will give the chance for the boat to give 100% throttle. Um, and once the boat has 100% throttle, we want to see whether the boat is capable to turn by itself here. So here is the number one, uh, one sharp 90 degree turn. So we want to see whether it's capable to do this. And then they have multiple turns. This is the hardest turns. You want to see whether the robot is able to maneuver safely here. And the width of the riverbank is 10 meters, okay, uh, very small, 10 meters. And the dimension of the training track is 60 meter width and 100 meter length. So this is for the testing track. Uh, and this is the, the testing track. So the, the track that the boat's never seen before. It has three straight curves. It has six sharp U-turns and two sharp 90 degree corner. So this is 90 degree corner. And the width of the riverbank is 20 meters. Uh, the dimension of the train track is 130 meters uh, width and 140 meters length. So it's a large restricted water environment. It's like a port, uh, but we just want to illustrate the capability of the boat to maneuver without looking, without knowing that this, uh, this port exists before. So uh, the boat just seen it uh, when we run it. So no training there. So as of the results and discussion, um, in on, on the on the on the video on the left here is what you will see if you are on a boat. 
uh, on and the video on the right here is what we view the boat uh, from the top. So we see here that the boat is able to turn safely uh, while in the corners and complete the, the, the training track, okay? And we try to see the rudder angle and also the throttle response while nego negotiating with sharp corners. So here we see that every time, okay, if this is the throttle, throttle means that it tried to increase the speed. Uh, rather means uh, it try to turn left and right. So we see that it's like a human response because uh, typically if we reduce the rudder, okay, for example, if you want to take a, a roundabout, okay, when we try to take a roundabout or a corner, we normally uh, reduce the throttle. Uh, we, we typically reduce the throttle. So, and at the same time, when we reduce the throttle, so this is basically the noise, right? So this is noise. If you look at the curve, it's like this actually. So this is the curve. So we the boat try to reduce the, the throttle while making a corner here. So this is the corner. So that's how we read it. Um, so uh, we reduce the speed and take a sharp turn. Uh, that's how human behave. And from here, we notice that the autonomous boat is also doing it. So which means that uh, this is very, very natural. Uh, so very, very natural. It seems like the boat is thinking like a human. Um, and what happened to the velocity? So what happened to the velocity here? Um, the velocity, uh, when the boat is completing the corner, here the boat is completing the corner, the rudder angle change, uh, the boat try to increase the velocity. So which means that, as you complete, as you complete the, the turn, you try to increase your, your speed. So that's how human behave as well. Because before you, before you meet the corner, you are going to reduce your throttle. You are going to reduce your speed. Once you're almost done with the corner, you try to put your throttle. So similar to uh, what the AI behave now. So which means that the, the AI behave like a human. So in this sense, we are successful uh, to create an autonomous system that behave like a human. So this is very nice. Um, yeah. So uh, in the second experiments, we put the boat uh, in a place where the boat never seen before. Uh, the previous track is the track where the boat is training at. So if you are very, uh, if, if, you, if you drive in Jakarta every day, you know Jakarta very well. Uh, if you never been to Jakarta, you will feel alien because the roads are different, people drive uh, differently. So this is what happened to the boat. Uh, it's like uh, we transfer the boat that uh, used to uh, be in Jakarta and we put it in Jogja. So um, it eventually uh, able to drive carefully and also uh, manage to avoid collision. So we, we look at here, uh, there are two collisions uh, in, this, in this particular example. Uh, it ha we have one boat, and also here we have uh, collision number two, which is a boy. So we, we view here, there is a, a, a significant uh, throttle change and also rudder angle change because rudder angle is to change the, uh, the direction. Uh, and throttle will going to reduce every time it try to uh, avoid uh, the the obstacles. So this is something that corresponds to human behavior as well. Um, and furthermore, uh, if we are happen to be in a boat, we are going to be safe because it drives like us. We try to uh, take a corner and also try to avoid obstacles. Something that we want. Now we come to the discussions. Um, if we zoom in, okay, if we zoom in and we try to look at the rudder angle, okay, we try to look at the rudder, steering angle, okay, steering angle. Okay, if you drive, um, would you rather drive real, in relaxing steering or you drive with steering to the left and right while going straight? So this is the question that we try to answer. Um, the robot is very, very, uh, obsessed with trying to be safe. It has sensors, very sensitive sensors. And if you are trying to move forward, okay, if you try to move forward, 
a human operator will going to maintain the rudder angle or maintain your steering at zero. So this is the human driving. We try to maintain the steering at zero. Uh, but since the robot is optimized for safety, even a small uh, curve just beside the road will make the robot feel very panicked. So this is what happened here. In a straight turns, in a straight dire direction, the boat is having a very erratic steering motion because it is very obsessed with being safe. So this is what happened. If you compare with human, you are going to drive very, very relaxed compared to the robot. Um, and for the sake of discussion, uh, although the vehicle performed better than human operator in terms of consistency, uh, it is not comfortable. Uh, so not consider human comfort because you are going to be uh, you are you are going to be very disoriented in a boat which is very very um, uh, which is very um, erratic have erratic steering. So we see that the autonomous system is too actively uh, observing obstacles and therefore sacrificing human comfort. So this is going to be the future work something that you can work out in the in the future to to put inside uh, human comfort uh, for this. Particular example, we use hydrography uh, surveying robot. So it doesn't matter if the robot is comfortable or not, as long as it can uh, observe the river. So this is uh, the future work that you can take up in the future. So um, as a conclusion presented in this work, uh, the state of the art review and also experimental analysis on the use of neuroevolutionary methods in ship design discipline particularly in the, uh, the scope of autonomous handling scenarios. Although the autonomous vehicle have been progressing rapidly for the land-based vehicles like cars, the research for self-driving boats is still lacking. It possesses significant gaps despite of economic and also safety impacts because we want people to be safe at sea in the water. In this work, uh, an illustrative example has been presented using a simplified model uh, in preliminary neuro in the in the research that was a scenario, which is the vertical riverbank, uh, using preliminary neuroevolutionary model, uh, and we have seen that this model is not only good for navigation in research to waters, but also capable for avoiding obstacles within the proximity of the distance sensor. So, uh, using the end-to-end -end unsupervised reinforcement learning. So we see that the network has predict the best steering angle and throttle response while avoiding collision with other floating objects uh, and also riverbank. Uh, additionally, the handling performance of the ship has been compared with human operator and the autonomous system. Uh, and we see that the future models may include the consideration of comfort uh, uh, for humans uh, in ship handling within the ANN training to ensure that the ESV or the autonomous surface vehicle or autonomous boat, not only capable to perform safe maneuver operation, but also comfortable uh, to handle human passenger. So, yep. So that's my uh, lecture for today. Uh, it takes about 20 or 30 minutes, I think 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, so sure. I would welcome for questions. Thank you. So back to you, uh, Madam Fitri. Oh yeah, thank you so much, Prof. Faisal, for the explanation. So this is so interesting, I think, for me because uh, I just know that from mechanical field, also uh, include about the algorithm, right, in data mining or maybe machine learning. So it means that uh, nowadays the trending is like a cross major field. Maybe from mechanical engineering also should learn about the algorithm in machine learning. And also information technology also should learn about the machine or about the mechanical, like, like so. Well, uh, for this session is the discussion session and also we we'll open the Q&A session, question and answer. So please to the students here, or maybe the lecturers that already joined here want to ask some questions. I allow you to maybe write down on the chat box or maybe you can raise your hand on the screen. Pak Taufik Muhammad mungkin bisa bantu melihat siapa yang raise hand. 
Oh, oh. Pak Yopi. Oh ya, Pak Yofi, Pak Yofi, Head Department of Electrical Engineering. Please welcome Pak Yofi. If you want to ask something, you can open mic. Or maybe you already. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation, uh, Dr. Ahmad Faisal. It's quite interesting. And uh, I'm from uh, Electrical Engineering. So uh, it is inter interesting that you are choosing the boat uh, autonomous, yeah? And yeah, the way I see that uh, boot uh, control is very complex, yeah. And uh, the presentation you you or you show is uh, you test it on the canal, yeah. And uh, usually for the boot, there are uh, required uh, very experienced captain, yeah, who understand the uh, wave and the uh, uh, water flow and everything and uh, in the sea. So, so have you? Uh, I mean, uh, are you uh, planning to to uh, upgrade this uh, 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 this uh, uh, this system to 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 be to be used in the sea? Yeah, it's very complex in the sea. I think. Yeah, that's my question, Pak. Uh, terima kasih, Bapak Yofi. Thank you for the comment. I really appreciate that comment. Okay. Uh, and that's really that's really true. That's really spot on. That's true. Your comment is true. Um, if you look at the review in the literature, um, one of the okay, yeah, this is the collision avoidance uh, using correct. So in in marine discipline, uh, we have certain rules that we need to comply. So which means that uh, you cannot go to the sea without knowledge, <laughs> and then uh, you cannot simply take over a boat without knowing how to do it. So. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, for this particular example, it's a very simple example for the river operation using uh, autonomous uh, water quality robot, right? Water quality robot. Uh, for the Corex, uh, we still have significant gap there, uh, Bapak Yofi. Itu uh, bermakna, if we try to publish here, it's going to be very significant contribution. Um, I, I would refer here to Lecky in 2019. Um, most of Lecky's work uh, Professor Lecky's work is on the implementation of neuroevolution for Corex. Uh, but if you look at the literature, not many others uh, who is doing so. So uh, I would think that uh, this particular work has the uh, potential to be expanded further for the autonomous uh, boat or containers that comply with collision avoidance rules at sea. Yeah, betul, Bapak Yofi. Uh, and I would welcome any of the uh, docent uh, if you are interested to, to conduct this kind of research uh, for the S3 uh, PhD. I would welcome to do so, so we can work together on this. Terima kasih, Pak Yofi. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Ya, terima kasih, Pak Yofi, untuk pertanyaannya. Yang selanjutnya, uh, ada lagi mungkin yang mau raise hand, mau bertanya secara langsung. Say something to Professor Faisal, maybe. Yang raise hand di sini siapa ada lagi? Okay, before that, uh, I'd like to see the chat box here. There is a student. The name is Fikri Firman Syah. Fikri Firman Syah, maybe you just say something by open your microphone, maybe. Are you here? You have question on the chat box, then I think you need to say it, maybe. Fikri Firman Syah. Pak Taya mungkin bisa dibantu open mic-nya. Sudah di open komis. Oke. Okay. Pak Firman Syah. Hello, where are you? Oke, okay, I will read here the question. My name is Fikri from Mechanical Engineering. I'm working on water quality monitoring in a lake in Lake Ciberem, Tasikmalaya. The lake named Chiberem in Tasikmalaya region. I have made a robot that moves on the surface of the water, but the balance of the robot is unstable. Can you give your opinion on this matter? Okay, Will right. Professor can give some suggestion. Boleh, boleh. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, terima kasih, uh, Pak Fikri uh, from Mechanical Engineering. So this is very interesting. My 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 first. I was undergrad in mechanical engineering, uh, but for the PhD, I do PhD in ship design. So I think I know how to solve this problem. Okay, so you basically have a robot um, and the robot must have lots of sensors, right? 
Okay, so if this is uh, the robot, it has lots of sensor. Let me try to share my screen, see whether I can share it now. Oh, uh, do you still have, oh yeah, you still look at my screen, right? Yes. Okay, you still look at my screen, that's good. So, um, so what happened is, if you have lots of sensors and you put oh. the sensors on the top, and this is the water line, right? Uh, and this might be your center of gravity. Uh, because the sensor is very heavy and you have lots of batteries on the top. So uh, if, you, if you look at from the profile uh, here, uh, the center of gravity is above the water. Okay, above the water. This is a, a very simplified explanation on this. So we can go on the details later, but to, to keep it simple, okay, if you look from the back, we need to have the center of gravity to be as close as possible to the bottom or the keel of the boat. Therefore, the boat will going to be very stable. Uh, this is similar if you are standing on a boat, right? So if you are standing on a boat, uh, like this one, so you, you are on top of the boat and you are holding something heavy here. So if you hold something heavy, you become very unstable. So you go to the left and to the right. One way to make your boat stable or while holding this is by lying down. If you lie down here, the boat suddenly becomes stable. So you sit down. If you sit down, then the boat will become stable. So similarly, in this particular example, we try to lower the center of gravity by putting all those batteries down. Put all those batteries, especially batteries. If the battery is very close to the bottom of the boat or the keel, uh, then your, your boat will going to be very, very stable. So that's one uh, advice, particular advice that I can share to you for a start. Uh, uh, there are others, other consideration. Uh, if you are having hydrographic boats, uh, it's okay to put it in the, in the middle, like this one, uh, put it in the middle, longitudinal center of gravity. Uh, but if you have a speed boat, probably you need to put somewhere towards the back uh, because anyhow, your boat will going to to trim, to go up like this. So therefore you need to put your mass uh, probably close to the engines at the back. So that's some of the tips that I can give for boat design like this. Okay, Fikri Firmansha, how's that? I think it's clear enough, right, Fikri? Well, okay. Uh... For the next question, is there anyone here who is rising? Ibu Fitri, yang ini mahasiswa tahun And... berapa ibu? Ini uh, mahasiswa yang mana pak? Pesertanya atau nah, yang ayo. baru bertanya? Bukan. Uh... Kalau untuk pesertanya? Yang, yang berada di dalam session ini? Oh, di session ini uh, semua, semua angkatan. Hmm. Untuk semua angkatan, uh, any level. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Alright. Welcome, welcome. Please. Mungkin yang sedang skripsi juga ini uh, bisa menjadi referensi ya untuk mahasiswa-mahasiswa uh, yang ada di sini. Baik, uh, untuk yang lain lagi mungkin ada yang mau bertanya lagi. Who is rising hand? Okay, well, uh, I think maybe because the time is up, it's already 15 minutes, I think. So to Professor Faisal, thank you so much. This is very interesting material. And thank you so you much, always, Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wish you always be healthy. You too. Thank you so much for the session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hope that we can go and visit UMT and also uh, go to the beach there. Sure. And maybe do some... <laughs> Welcome to our campus. <laughs> Taking the boat there. Yeah. <laughs> our friends from UMTAS. Maybe for the lecturers, maybe is there anyone who wants to visit them after the Malaysia open border? Yeah. Oh, it's still, yeah, it's still one close. Line, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
be right. Because uh, I heard from the news that the Omicron is already come maybe into the Asian. Yeah, yeah, we have one one cases here, confirmed case. So we're not sure what's what's the development now. So as far as we see, not much impact yet, but we need to be careful. Oh yeah, sure, of course. Then I hope it will uh, be ended soon for the COVID, and so we can all can travel to any any countries that we want. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for Professor Faisal. See you again maybe in next occasion. Yeah. Uh, we should be healthy you. always. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, so that's uh, our first session for this lecture today. And uh, before we go to the next lecture,